Hello viewers, Alan here and welcome back to my home workshop. So in this video I want to uh, carry on with my uh, getting some serious kit for drill grinding. I've already got a drill jig, a grinding jig sorted out and I'm happy with that. But I found that when I was doing the prototype work with that, that um, I didn't have a, a very good solution for collecting the dust coming off the grinding wheel. I cobbled something up which we'll have a look at in a minute but really it's not up to snuff. So this video is about creating a, some proper bracketry and a method for holding uh, dust extraction uh, while I'm grinding the drills. So yeah, so I used these two brackets and I was able to fairly quickly cobble something up. And uh, it sort of, well it did work, you know, I wouldn't say it sort of worked, it did work. But um, it's a bit awkward because it's it's actually fixed to the it's actually fixed to the table so when I needed to reset the table height for the change in angle on the drill um, I had to reset this and uh, it was a bit of a nuisance so really a bit, much better solution is going to be to have this mounted on some bracketry that um, is attached to the uh, the grinding spindle housing so then this thing it will stay in sync with the grinding wheel and not move up and down with the table so it'd be a much better solution so there are, as I said these two um, drilled and tapped holes already available here so I'll have a look at uh, creating some bracketry that'll um, hang down and allow me to um, uh, uh, easily hold this uh, nozzle uh, at that sort of consistently at that location so I'll we'll get to it and see what I can come up with. Right, so I have to make a, a nozzle to catch the stuff coming off the stone and I'd like it to be metal if possible um, for durability I guess but uh, maybe that's not such a bright idea I guess we'll find out. Anyway, so I've taken a bit of ordinary round tube here and squished it to make it into a flat so that's going to be my uh, flat nozzle uh, running against the face near the face of the stone and I've got um, uh, a 45 degree bend in the making here and I'll do another one so I get well I might do another one to get 90 we'll see what it looks like with 45 okay so I've made one bend and welded it up but rather than putting a, a second one in I decided it'd be better to um, go as quickly as possible to the large diameter tube to minimise opportunities for dust and whatever to build up and to uh, reduce the vacuum from restriction through the pipe. So that's what my current plan is. Let's see how well that works out. Okay, so um, I decided to uh, put a bit of shape on the end of this tube to make it more uh, closely match the uh, piece that's going to have to stick on. So I did that. I just squashed the sides a little bit by putting a piece in, uh, in the press and just squeezing it to, to get to that shape. So even with my welding skills that should be a little bit easier to to fit fit on. But what I'm worried about is when I put a, a big hole in the back of this or face of that, I might get close to the edge here and then have trouble burning holes in the material. Because like I say, I don't overestimate my welding skills. Anyway, I think I will put a hole in there and if, uh, if the worst comes to the worst, I'll just have to cut the back off afterwards to clean the uh, the hole on the inside. But I think I'll mark it out and put a decent size hole on that face and we'll see how we go. Yeah, I don't know how well this will show up on camera but um, I decided to go ahead and cut a big piece out of the uh, what will be the, the face that uh, I weld on here. So my idea is to basically butt weld it around here. But I want to roll these lips up a little bit to come up the sides and uh, hopefully give me something better to weld to. Anyway, that's the plan. We'll see how it works out. Alright, so I've opened um, that up and it's now going, it's now a snug fit on there. Um, I have to tap it in, which I haven't done yet. See, so it's just going to be a, a very firm fit in there, something like that, and uh, weld that on, and then I'll worry about filling it. Weld that on, and then worry about filling in this bit here, and then I think we'll be we'll be good. 
if my welding's any good. Well, my welding is erratic. Hopefully I can do enough good welding to get this done. We'll see. Right, well that's got it tacked on. Uh, it's not going to fall off. So now I've got to try and dress these uh, edges in a little bit so there isn't such a big gap to, to try and close up and around the corner here. I'll be cutting this off at an angle and putting I'll be cutting this piece off at an angle and putting a plate across there. Okay, let's dress the edges uh, down a little bit. Close the gaps up a little bit that I've got to, uh, to weld. So let's see how we go. My problem with welding is that for some reason or another, I've never able, to, never seem able to see where the um, the the bead weld bead is going. I know it sounds silly, but anyway, yeah. Anyway, that's what that's my situation. Okay, so here's the untouched version. Uh, <laughs> for my usual habit, wandered off at a into the boondock somewhere, uh, but the end result's going to hold it together. Not so bad around there. And I finally got my act together a bit better on this side. <laughs> well, that's cleaned things up a little bit. It looks halfway respectable. I didn't bother trying to do anything down in there. It's too hard to get it. Uh, but it's going to get the job done. Doesn't look that bad. And I folded the back end over the heel, if you like, over there. So now I've just got to make a little piece to fill in there. Shouldn't be that hard. And uh, job's done. Well, this part of the job's done. So what's that saying? Something like an angle grinder and paint makes me look like the welder I ain't. <laughs> Something like that. Well, uh, well, I'm showing it because uh, I'm, it's just what I can do. I'm not ashamed of it. There's obviously any number of welders who are better than I am. But it's stuck on there. It isn't going to leak. It's not a pressure vessel. Well, I suppose it is really. But uh, vacuum cleaner on its... Uh, best day struggles to come up with four or five pounds per square inch and chewing gum will hold that in so i don't think there's gonna be any problem with these welds anyway time to move on so now with the assistance of our old friends the exhaust pipe brackets you can see um, what I, the vision i have for this thing so um, it's only obviously temporarily mounted at the moment but the idea is to have a mounting that picks up on those two bolt holes. It's going to be adjustable up and down a bit and in and out a bit. And I'll be able to rotate it like that as well. So it should be pretty flexible to deal with uh, different size wheels. And um, because of the uh, this adjustment here, I'll be able to deal with different uh, width wheels and so on. This arrangement highlights that uh, a single um, L-shaped or Z-shaped bracket is not going to work. It's going to have to be a, a top hat sort of thing. So I can have a clamp on each side and make it a, a bit more stiff. But it's uh, looking promising. So let's carry on. So I've made a, um, a top bar that picks up on those two uh, mounting points. And I thought I might as well slot it while I was there. Um, have a bit of extra movement. Um, I'm thinking at the moment now about how to have a, a vertical mounting element. So this uh, could certainly go like that. <clears throat> Pair of holes in the bottom of this. And uh, I'm thinking about slotting here to get some vertical height adjustment. And if there's a single bolt through there, I'd also get some additional uh, in and out adjustment. This uh, um, exhaust pipe bracket would work very well because there's a lot of, uh, it, it clamps on this very tightly, but there's quite a lot of allowance for um, variation in uh, size. And this tube is no longer completely round because of all the pushing and shoving I did on it. It's gone a little bit out of round. So um, uh, having it uh, in this sort of a mounting makes a lot of sense. So it also, though, allows for it to be rotated like that to get the best uh, um, orientation here. So that's certainly a viable option. But what I was uh, con also contemplating was um, 
it'd be nice if I could get to, to swing it like that a little bit as well which of course this arrangement wouldn't allow so I'm thinking now instead of having um, the angle iron there which looks a big agri agricultural anyway although I suppose the exhaust pipe plant does as well um, I'm thinking about having a round bar here um, and for this to be able to slide up and down the round bar and then it would also allow it to um, uh, rotate a bit this way for additional alignment options and uh, I think it'll look a little bit more sanitary than a lump of angle iron there so that's what my current thinking is now I did make um, a test piece as an alternative to um, the exhaust pipe clamp and I was going to have a piece of material bore a correct size hole in it, which this is um, but what I found, that, that's when I found that this uh, pipe is no longer round so that can be uh, uh, persuaded to go on and it will come up here alright but it's it's not a comfortable fit and I don't want to bore a hole that's oversized because then it gets sloppy so that's why I think uh, even if I don't use the exhaust pipe this piece I'm thinking that um, a half seat with the u-bolt is a better option than trying to have it in a, a complete um, um, housing Okay, so I just decided that I'd see what it looked like with uh, the vertical piece made out of angle iron and it doesn't actually look as bad as I thought it would. Um, I made up a, a seat from that uh, piece of steel that I bored the hole through, the piece of um, rectangular hollow section tube, so that all worked out pretty neatly. And it seems a pretty um, robust setup, um, so the sort of degrees of freedom or adjustment I've got with this now can rotate it, can swing this in and out a bit I'll swing it like that to get a bit more adjustment if the uh, adjustment up here isn't enough and um, I'm not sure there's any point trying to do this uh, using a piece of round stuff or whatever um, I guess I've still got to slot this to get the, the height adjustment but that's obviously pretty simple to do so I think I'll put the slot in and see what I think so I decided to put a, a short row of holes in instead of making it a slot because um, I was a bit concerned that the slot might weaken the, um, the angle too much weaken it in the sense of making it um, more susceptible to twisting uh, I mean angle iron is strong in several directions but it's about as weak as stewed rhubarb as far as uh, resisting twist is concerned also if I change my mind later I can easily convert the row of four holes into a slot or two slots so uh, let's we'll see how it goes ok now we'll drill the uh, receiving hole in the, uh, the horizontal tube we go a bit faster than anything. Yeah, something like that. I'm going to slow it down a bit. Just deburr that. These countersinks that are just have a single hole at a, an angle through them work really well for just for doing a little bit of deburring in a chamfer. They don't dig in and um, just get rid of that big lump of swarf. So now it's letting me down a bit. When there's a big lump of swarf there like that, it slows it down a little bit. 
should have cleaned that off first. There we go. Right. So let's go and see um, how all this fits. So this bolt's way too long, but it won't matter. But actually, I think we want to start off with this in the um, next hole down. Set this guy roughly where it should be. Tighten these guys up. All right. So there's uh, plenty of scope for fine adjustment there. Bring this over a bit like that, and uh, time to hook the hose up. And so I might have to think about um, whether or not. This uh, single pivot here is going to be a problem. Well, we'll see. Yeah. Um, I, can't, I haven't done it up very tight because I don't want to crush this tube. So what I might have to do is put a, a spacer in here so that the uh, you can do the bolt up really tight without crushing the tube. It's probably a good idea to do that anyway. Um, and I was deliberately leaving this tube a little bit long initially. Uh, but there's probably no reason to do that either. Anyway, let's try and get set up with a bit of hose and, and other things and we'll see how well this works. So this vacuum clean is very noisy, unfortunately. Well, that uh, certainly seemed to have plenty of uh, uh, pull on the nozzle. Probably one of the few times when you'd be pleased to say that something that you've made sucks and sucks really badly or really well. Anyway, so it's probably time to try it out with some real sparks now. Right, so one big advantage of the four facet uh, grinding method is you don't have to pivot the drill at all uh, around this axis. So um, means I can have as much, basically have as much drill sticking out past the end as I like uh, so I can reach over the top of uh, this guy. But I might yet um, profile the bottom of this um, piece uh, a little bit. So I've got a bit more um, get close to that sort of space. Anyway, let's see if the vacuum cleaner works. The, the uh, grit collection works. Looks like I'd be better off if I got this a bit closer to the wheel. See if I can do that. Not any closer than that and it'd be touching. Because it might be it might be useful to have it a bit lower down as well. So let's let's try that. I think we'll, we'll try having this uh, lower. Okay, let's see how that works. Okay, so let's see how this works with the uh, the stone facing tool. So I've adjusted the setup slightly. I uh, lifted it uh, up one because this uh, block isn't as tall as uh, maybe is ideal. So maybe I'll put a spacer block underneath it. Anyway, the point is that the setup's flexible and you're obviously dealt with the situation. 
So let's get some vacuum and some machine. The machine's quiet, the vacuum's what's making all the noise. Well, that worked pretty well. I think it gathered most of the dust. Actually, I'll know more when I have a look at the, the video. But from what I could see uh, uh, here, it's, yeah, some got past it, but I reckon it got most of it. So that's a big improvement over no uh, dust collection. So now I know that this uh, dust collection concept works, it's time to go back and remake a piece. So when I made this piece, I wasn't originally thinking that I would actually use it. So I wasn't too fussed about how I did it. And I had it clamped in the uh, uh, vise like that. <clears throat> and I think, unfortunately, that uh, that resulted in, um, or allowed for, uh, some distortion to creep in. You can't tell now because obviously it's sawn in half. But the hole isn't quite round. And I didn't worry about it because, as I said, I wasn't originally planning to use it. But after I finished uh, getting everything else sorted, I re remembered this and thought I'd come back to it and make another one. Uh, and make a better effort getting the hole round this time. So that's what we're doing here. So it's a, a 35 millimetre hole saw and then using the boring head to open the hole out to 38 millimetres. So cutting this bit off that <coughs> short piece of tube was a, another job which I was only able to do courtesy of the uh, horizontal bandsaw accessory that I made and there's a video about that but it's proved to be very useful. Okay, so now I'll get uh, set up for doing the boring operation. Okay, we're starting off, starting off with starting off with 35.5. So we've got a bit to, to take out to get to 38. <clears throat> now I wound it back a long way to uh, make sure I was inside the diameter. Because all the winding back, I've got backlash to worry about here. So now I come forwards by a good half a turn to make sure that backlash is out. So we come forwards to naught. So naught, and we'll do a, a pass at that. Now what speed will we go with? Uh, probably go a bit faster than that. Yeah, uh, something like that. So I think we'll engage the uh, the feed, the vertical feed. So that should have engaged the vertical feed. Yeah, and down we go. Okay, just check the diameter on that. I've got to have to uh, repeat it on the, the lower hole as well, of course. That's taken us out to 36.2. Just cleaning the hole up, but we'll take that through to the bottom hole.
somewhere there. Seven point eight. Each mark is supposed to be 0 0.01 on the diameter, so I now want point 0.2. So let's take ten thingos and see where we come. So we expect to be by taking ten, we expect to be on thirty-seven point nine. We have in fact got 37.9 and 37.9 that way as well. Okay. So we'll take another 10 and that should have us on the, on the money. I'd be pretty happy with that. So this is clearly a pretty darn good tool, even if I'm a, a bit of a fumbler about uh, using it with this current lack of experience that I've got with it. But anyway, we got the uh, right on the dimension we're looking for. Mm, it's probably still probably still tighter than it needs to be. Take another another light cut. Another five. Yep, that'll do. We'll call this the final one anyway, whatever happens. That's just going in nicely now. Oop. Yep. Take that. That'll be fine. Right. Take it out, cut it in half.
Uh, there we go. Oh, look at that. Perfect, eh? And for the real one. I think that's close enough. Let's do a quick clean up. Okay, so now I've got to drill a couple of holes in it, uh, but before I can do that, I need to put the boring head away. Okay, so we put the boring head back in its comfortable little velvet lined perch box, whatever. Use that down in there. How did that get in there? Yeah, a bit. <coughs> so I haven't had. Uh, it's only really the second time I've used this, so I've got a bit of learning to do about it to be better informed on its capabilities. It's like a pretty good bit of kit though. Came with an assortment of uh, uh, boring bars and adapters and things. Uh, anyway, it certainly did the job today. I'll put that away. Okay, so now we'll drill the two uh, eight millimeter holes in the uh, support bracket. And that's finished making that bracket. So, U bolt's going to go around the uh, pipe. And then new saddle is going to fit on there and it'll be snug as a bug in a rug. Okay, so making a bush to uh, slip in the end of that tube so it doesn't get squashed when we do the bolt up. Bush needs to be 22 millimetres or thereabouts long, so we've got to have an 8mm hole through it to start with. And that's what we're going to drill here. Do that, one to go in 8mm, uh, one to go in 25 so. Off we go, off we go. Let's pull these ships out of it. 20, 25. Now we just basically just got to part that off to length and we're, we're done. We get the parting tool on the job. Checking again what we're looking for here is a bush that's bush that's uh, 22.3 long And we'll get close enough to that length just by going like that. Just want to knock the corner off the, uh, the bush before I card it off. bush. Hopefully it's the right length. We'll soon find out. Yeah, it looks pretty snug fit in there. So that'll do us just fine. A 
Okay, so we push this uh, bush in now. in there, help persuade this guy into line. So that will about do it. Let's get an 8mm bolt and test it. Oh, happy with that. Sorry, lost a little bit of uh, video, but uh, what's happening in this clip is I'm revisiting the um, drill guide channel from the sharpening uh, jig and uh, putting in an additional slot so that um, uh, indexing slot so I can set the position of larger drills when the, the short um, slot across the end isn't sufficient. So, to make a 4mm wide slot, I first drill a a pilot hole, about a three millimeter hole, because my four millimeter end mill isn't able to drill directly in, it has to have a lead point. So I'll put in a three millimeter hole in and then open it out with the four millimeter end mill. So it would be nice to just push that in the hole and then go and start going sideways, <clears throat> but I found that um, these smaller end mills, if you try and do that, they flex enough and over a, any sort of a distance they start wandering off course. So really you need a, a pecking sort of thing. Um, and this is a four flute guy who can't drill. It has to go into a, a hole. So we go over a millimetre at a time and that's how we do it. I really don't know how long this uh, trench or this slot should be, so I'm going for 20 millimetres and call that it and hope that's about right. If that's just deburred, that might even be all right. Okay, so it's got it. So that will uh, work now when we've got a, a much bigger drill that I can't uh, get from there. For example, this fella. See now I can catch him here. Okay, so that's finished fiddling and fettling these pieces. I've um, put the extra slot in here for dealing with bigger drills. I've uh, rounded the corners off on this guy. And you've seen me already, the bush in there. And um, they've all had a, an argument with a piece of sandpaper. And I think the sandpaper generally came off best. So now it's uh, painting and bluing. So I blued uh, these pieces using um, this uh, kit. Um, I think it's primarily meant for doing guns, but it seems to work for any mild steel. So I've just uh, used most of the consumables in it now. I have to decide uh, whether to buy another one or um, find a cheaper way to do it. Anyway, so they're all blued. Okay, so all these uh, blue painted things were done using this product, which worked really well. It uh, does exactly as uh, claimed. Um, it's paint and prime. I did actually put two coats on, 
but even with one coat the coverage was surprisingly good. I'm not affiliated with either of those two products I've just mentioned. I include them in this video only for reference. They work for me and um, for what it's worth. Okay, so all of the pieces of my um, drill grinding and dust collection accessories are now either painted, blued or plated and we're ready for final assembly. Um, bang! Let's get to it. So here it is, fully assembled and installed. Well that finishes the uh, drill grinding and dust collection for the AR5 for me. I'm happy with what I've achieved and it's going to be just a kit that's moved into general use in the, in the workshop now. Um, I hope you saw some bits and pieces that you found interesting and perhaps useful. And uh, for me it's time to think about the next project and move on. Um, so, see you in the next one.